Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime, my name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash I don't work here lady, so sit back relax and enjoy some reddit stories. No, I don't work here, but it's fun to pretend I do. A while ago, I was at the local aquarium with a few friends who were new to the area. I've always been a keen animal person, I learnt to read from basic animal fact books, and I'm full of weird and wonderful facts about Australia's wildlife. This definitely extends into the marine world too, you might be able to see where this is going. Since my new friends are from the distant land of America, I take the opportunity to share my Aussie ocean wisdom with them as we walk through the aquarium. I always wear a cap that says, Living Reef Ranger on it, so I don't blame people for what happened next at all. In fact, I think it's a bit funny, and I'm actually proud of myself. As I'm explaining the social interactions of clownfish to my friends, I notice a mum with a couple young, 8 to 12 year old kids with her listening to what I'm saying. I ignore her and keep talking on with my mates. But then one of the kids asks me a question about it. I happily explain since everyone should know about nature. As kids do, he asks a few follow up questions and I explain in a simple manner so they can understand. He politely thanks me and goes back to his mum. My mates and I think it's a bit cute, but we sort of brush it off and move to the next section. But the family follows, and not only them, a couple others too. I am now giving a tour of this aquarium, and I am loving it. I get to completely nerd out with my animal facts. I feel so smart. I have the power. Until a youngish teen girl, around 15, asks me how to get a job at the aquarium because she wants to be a marine biologist. I inform her, and hence the other people around me, that I don't actually know because I don't work here. A few surprised looks and a few people leave my tour, but I happily carried on. When we were finished, my friends thought it was hilarious people thought I was giving a tour, but said they felt privileged since it was free and they were the VIPs. That's such a great story, this person just needs to keep doing them and make everyone's day much better. We don't work here anymore. Backstory. I used to work for a speciality repair company. We would have customers bring us boards to rebuild all the time. Public interest for the items we fixed went down mainly because they were not needed and very expensive. The company went under overnight and all the tools and parts were left in the building. Almost a year later, a buddy of mine said he bought the contents of a building site unseen and asks me to take a look because he recognised some of the equipment being similar to what I have in my home shop. I end up riding with him, no clue where we are going and end up at my old workplace. We are there for about an hour looking through everything, checking what current market values are and just looking at what all was there because it's been almost a year. We were about to call it a day when someone knocks at the door. Oops, I forgot the open sign is hardwired into the lights. My buddy goes to the door and I recognise the guy. He was a regular, has about 20 high end wine coolers in his basement and would bring us crates full of boards to rebuild so he has some spares to swap out if ever one failed, and they fail frequently. O will be the old customer, B my buddy and M me. Oh thank god you're back in business. I have two coolers down and no spares and lost a lot of my collection. What? He's a wine collector, he has massive wine coolers in his basement and the boards burn up constantly, he was a frequent customer. Great, it's the same tech, the other place I've been going to has an idiot for a tech. Sorry dude, this place has been closed a while, we don't work here anymore, I just bought the contents. What do you mean? He works here, I know he does, I have come here for years. The price was always $100 a board, I'm willing to pay more if parts are more expensive. 
Dude, I have no clue what you're talking about. We are not a business, I just bought a bunch of random stuff at auction. I can hear what's going on, and I can see in the guy's truck there are two crates of boards, probably 15 altogether. I pull my buddy aside. We have the parts to rebuild what is in his truck. Each one will take me about 5 minutes. It's up to you, but could be some quick cash if you've got the time. Uh, okay. I go out to tell the guy I will do it for the stand price this time, but since the business is closed, if he needs any fixed in the future, I can do it out of my house, but the price may change. The guy got super excited and agreed, left the boards, his number, and went to eat until we called him back. About an hour and a half go by, and I have all the boards done. It was 16 of them, so I call the guy and he shows up. How did it go? All good? Yep, they test properly on the bench. As always, you will want to test as many as you can in the machine ASAP. I put my contact info in one of the crates. The total comes to $1,600. No, no, that price won't work. You guys went out of your way to do this and you got it done in the same day. That's never happened before. He hands my buddy a bank bag. My buddy rifles through the stack of bills inside, while I load the truck. I know the guy is a big tipper, because once he paid me $200 just to stay an extra half hour to pick up his stuff. There's $2,600 in here. I'm the only person that bid on this stuff. I only paid $1,200. You already made my money back and then some. Needless to say, my shop got a bit of an upgrade that day, and my wallet got a tad bit heavier too. Only now have I realised they were talking about circuit boards the entire time. For some reason I had this image of him fixing like wooden boards or something, but now it makes a lot more sense. This is unacceptable. I know you work here. I am a 6 foot 3 male, a little on the chubby side, 350 pounds but I do not look it. I work at a place that is a sister company that rhymes with tall blot. We wear very similar coloured vests but as you might have guessed, with different logos. I was also wearing black shorts, a silver hat with a nice dark blue polo shirt. For this story there is me, wicked Karen of the West, manager and employee. One fateful night as I'm just getting off work about 9.30, my girlfriend calls me to tell me that we are out of milk and some other miscellaneous items. But I only remember leaving with the milk. As I pull into the parking spot and get out of my vehicle, I heard a faint, excuse me sir. Not thinking it was pointed in my direction, I thought nothing of it. Mistake number one. Halfway towards the entrance door, I realised that I didn't take off my vest from work. Mistake number two. So, I quickly turn around and put the vest in my trunk, this time hearing a more noticeable, more agitated, Excuse me, sir? Once again, I thought nothing of it. Mistake number three. And entered the store. Fast forward about 10 minutes with the milk in my hand, standing by the flower wall trying to decide on buying my girlfriend some roses or not before I head out. I would do anything for that woman. I feel a sharp pain in my side and left leg. Cue the wicked Karen. I stumbled sideways and almost fell over. Someone rammed me with their car intentionally. I turned to the person, ticked at this moment. Real quick, I am a very non-confrontational person and try to avoid any sort of confrontation if possible, and yell, what the? But before I could say another word, she, like most Karens do, cut me off. This lady had the trademark Karen hairdo, long acrylic nails, a designer purse, and looked to be in her mid to late 40s, and looked to be about 5 foot 5. I can't believe how incredibly disrespectful and rude you are. I am a paying customer. I called for you to come help me in the parking lot and you as an employee ignored me. Don't you know who I am? I will have your job for this. Come with me, you POS. We're going to talk with your manager. 
She then went to grab my arm to try and drag me to the nearest manager. Watching a 5 foot 5 woman try to drag a 6 foot 3 full grown man like he's a little kid will always make me laugh. But as I said, I was ticked. I snatched my arm away from her and yelled back. Lady, I do not give a flying rat who you think you are. And honestly, I don't want to know. I do not work here. Also, what gives you the right to touch someone when you don't get what you want, you entitled witch? Upon hearing the yelling, I heard some running footsteps and around a corner popped out employee. Uh, what's going on here? The wicked Karen inserts a smug smile. This employee ignored me and physically assaulted me when I tried to ask for some help. I demand to speak with your manager about getting this man fired. B.S. Lady, that's a lie and you know it. You are the one assaulting people. I never laid a hand on you. And personally, I don't want to, you grunt. I don't work here. The employee runs to get the manager. How dare you talk to me like that? Do you kiss your mother with that disgusting mouth of yours? Not that it's any of your business, but as a matter of a fact, I do and she loves me very much. Can't say the same about you though, not with your attitude. The woman screams like a banshee. You son of a witch, do you know who I am? I will personally make sure you never work in this town again. Lady, I thought I already summarized that I do not care who you are, nor do I want to. You're lucky that I haven't already called the police. At this moment, the employee and manager come running around the corner. What seems to be the problem here? I was minding my own business when your employee assaulted me and started yelling and berating me. I want this man fired. Um, what the fudge, lady? More lies. How many times do I have to say it to get into your entitled thick skull? Read my lips, woman. I do not work here. I then turn to the manager. Sir, she is spreading lies and twisting her story around. She is the one who assaulted me. I lifted my shirt to show the marks that was left by her car on my side and left calf. The calf had a good bruise. Ew, no one wants to see your body. Put it away now. OMG, who would love something like that? Yes, this woman resorted to body shaming me. She went there. I will be proud of what I said next till the day I die. Once again, I have no idea who this woman is or if she has a daughter or not, but what I said shut her up. That's not what your daughter said last night. Oh! Then the manager turns to me. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to stop right there before I escort you out of the building. Sorry, I understand. The manager then turns to the wicked Karen. Ma'am, I can assure you that this man does not work for Tollblatt. This is unacceptable. I know he works here. I saw your employee get out of his truck with a blue vest on. I want him fired now. Ma'am, once again, he does not work here. I haven't seen him here before. Just to let you know, I will be contacting your corporate office to let them know about this rude employee that you are defending and what an incompetent manager you are. Please leave the store, ma'am. The wicked Karen scoffs and stomps out of the store. The manager turns to me. Sir, I do apologize for any convenience this must have caused you. Would you like us to call the police so you can file a report against her? To be honest, I seriously did consider pressing charges on her, but I was tired and wanted to go home. That and I didn't want to go through the whole court process, so I let her go paid for my milk and went home. That wasn't my first encounter and unfortunately probably won't be the last either. I sincerely hope that I never run into that woman again. Oh, it was almost perfect, but he didn't press charges. If he depressed charges, then she's not going to do it to any more people, but she's probably just going to keep doing it now. And wholesome, I don't work here. Once I was in one of those big box electronic stores. I forget which, and as most of them are closed now, it's not important. Anyway, I was there shopping around for a TV. 
I remember enjoying myself because there was a significant absence of staff, so I was not constantly bothered by people trying to help me. Anyway, some little old man asks me for help on TV. I tell him, sorry, I don't work here and the poor guy visibly deflates. This is when HDTVs were still fairly new, and there were a million different options and types. Old CRTs, LED, plasma, thin projection, and it was confusing as heck for me who had done research and shopped around. For this poor guy, it must have been a darn nightmare. Anyway, I figured I will help this poor guy out a little because even if he finds a salesperson, they are only going to recommend whatever is most expensive anyway. I don't work here, but I have been doing quite a bit of TV shopping and have good feelings about this one, and maybe that one over there. The little old man was clearly happy and wandered off to find someone to help him with his purchase. You see, just adding that one extra sentence at the end, giving your recommendation can make someone else's day. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.